here. And what I need you guys help with is explaining what we got going on here with their drones and things of this nature and... and, and... All right, so... Um... Okay, so we're doing um, drones with the kids and we're letting them do a demonstration for about five minutes. Um, two kids per uh, five minutes. Um, so we're doing a drone where it's have a drone and you control up, down, up, down, and then to the left and to the right. Um, so we're seeing if kids can really do, we're giving them a test run and we're having some fun with it. Hi, I'm Rob Daly from the Liberty Science Center. I'm the manager of the Maker Lab and the Innovation Lab over there. And what we do is we teach kids how to do some really cool stuff with amazing tech. Today we're showcasing drones and how it flies through the air and teaching kids their appropriate reception on how, what directions things wobble and go, pitch, roll, and thrust. Thank you. All right, so we're here at Thor's Hammer here at the Liberty Science Center. Uh, brought over, so I'm going to try to attempt to lift this, but if go you want to explain this first. Shot. First right. got to give it a shot, and then I'll explain right. how it works. So go ahead, give it a shot. So do I win something if I... If I... Go ahead, try to lift it. Oh, it's tough. You got it, you got it. Here, I bet you can do it. There we go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now you got it. Now you're worthy. So the trick to it is there's actually a magnet in there that I can turn on and I can turn off. So, if you came to visit, perhaps you could give that a try, or you could try your superhero quick change. The current time to beat is 30 seconds. Can you do it? Does everybody want to try? Can you guys get dressed in 30 seconds? All right, All right super superhero here. challenge. We've got this lady. We've got this lady. Come on down. So your goal is you have to put on your super hands, your super shoes, your super goggles, and your super cape, and do it as fast as you can. But first, to keep your hands up. Are you ready? On your marks. Get set. Go. Who's gonna do it? Who's gonna take the cake? The shoes are blowing away. I don't know what's gonna happen. She's got her goggles. She's got her goggles. It's okay, they work around your neck. That still counts. We've got two shoes on, two shoes on. One shoe blowing away. The cape is so big, it's taller than you. There is allowed to be assistance from parents if you'd like to assist to help your child be super. Can we do it? Who's gonna take it? We've got one super shoe. We've got a second super shoe coming on. We've got the gloves, we've got the gloves. So close! So close! Oh no. You have won! You did not beat the 30 seconds, but that is okay. It's still 30 seconds to beat and you're still super. What you have won? Would you like to be shot in the face of the Sioux water gun? Okay. That is your win. Do you guys want to know how it works? I have a fun button that's behind my back and it turns a magnet on and off. So I'm controlling electrons. Right? Now it's 200 pounds. It's only 13 pounds if I turn off the magnet. What's this, slime magnetic? This slime is magnetic slime. Yes. So it has a whole bunch of iron oxide in it, so when it's when you introduce a really powerful magnet, yeah, these guys unfortunately, right, not not strong enough to put the really powerful one on, so you can see. Ooh. And all of the iron oxide inside that slime starts to be attracted to that really powerful magnet, starts to suck it in. Is this, is this slime that they can make at home or Absolutely. Specialized, specialized slime? No, you can buy magnetic slime, but you can also make magnetic slime. There's lots of recipes online. This yeah, is so basically... Yeah, so like a lot of, like on YouTube videos, things like that? Mm-hmm. Basically, I... Uh, you... crazy with slime. I got slime all over the house. <laughs> yeah. There's all different kinds. Because this, metal, this um, magnet is very strong and it can move. It, it's strong enough. It can move it a little bit. Of the magnet. I think you have a science project for science fair next year. If you have a science fair next year, you should definitely do this. That, so wait a minute, you roll up in a ball, how far can you, how far can you stretch this? So what are we learning with this experiment here? I'm going to hold you to mic. Can you explain a little bit more? Sure. So here, you want to demonstrate when I explain it? I'm going to put it back here. So, if we want to make a dent on the silly putty, so how did we make a dent? You push it slowly. You push it slowly. What happened if you do it too hard? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. How come? Because you're going too hard. Say, because the molecules don't have enough time to stretch. And then you do it 
Because the monkeys don't have enough. Because the have enough strength to stretch. So the slower you go, the more it gets. Yes. This actually was done by NASA many years ago. They wanted to use it for building stuff, but they realized it doesn't work. Oh, so NASA wanted to use this stuff or what? That's how Silly Putty was invented that way. They wanted to use it, I guess, for some or sort of... Or, or? Uh, like to put stuff like... Yeah, probably like for materials in space. But they realized that it became a toy. It wasn't useful just because it's so soft. Do they copyright it? Does NASA get money off Silly Putty? That I don't know. So Silly Putty is actually from NASA. Pretty cool. Yeah, one of those inventions that became a toy. Hello. Uh, sure, these are cubelets. They're modular, um, modular magnetic robots. Have okay. different, um, they're different, so you can take the different cubes and put them together in different ways for robots that perform different kind of behaviors. Okay. Yeah. I see that one's like moving. That one has like an arm just twisting over yeah. down there. Yep. So this one is. Uh, oh, li one eyes light up and everything. It has moving arms. We have this one. We call it the uh, friendly dog because it comes to your hand. Oh, that's pretty cool. So these, we use these from our Ready Set Robotics program at the Science Center. That's pretty cool. You gonna follow me? It is, and then if you switch the wheels in the other direction, it'll be a scary cat. Really? Yeah. So what is it, using a sensor or something like this yep. underneath? Mm -hmm. The black one, the eyes are the sensor. Okay. And so they activate um, the other cubes to perform their functions. How are y'all doing? It's it's cool, right? It's like being in the Arctic here, right? No? Well, our program is, this is called Sub-Zero, the States of Matter. Now, how many of my friends here have ever heard that word matter before? Raise your hand nice and high. If you've ever heard that word matter, can anybody tell me what it means? Well, I guess I should introduce myself, too. I, I should probably do that, right? My name is Veronica. It's written really tiny on my shirt right here. This is Kara, and this is Kendra, and we work at Liberty Science Center. I hope you all have been having fun seeing all the activities we brought with us today. But now that I did that, it's all the heat, you know? It's messing with my order. I saw hands over here for what is matter, though. What do you think? Okay. So you said it's not like it doesn't matter. It's not that kind of matter. It's like elements. Elements is a good science word. What else do you know about matter? Go ahead. Matter means Nothing? Matter means nothing. I think it means the opposite of nothing. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, well, liquid is another good science word. That is what we call a state of matter. Go ahead in the back. Matter is in everything, absolutely. You, me, this thing that I'm standing on, the air that we're breathing right now, everything is made of matter. Right, and they come in three different states or forms, solid, liquid, and gas. So today, we're gonna to talk about these three states of matter and how we can change between them. So, right now, I always like to start talking about solids. What are some examples of solids? What do you think? Go ahead. Like dirt, dirt could be a solid. Go ahead, what's another solid? Bricks, right? And this concrete that I'm standing on right now, it's very solid. It's not doing anything. I'm walking all over it and it's not really like folding or anything. This is a very tough solid. What else is solid? It's okay, there's lots of stuff around us that's solid. In the back. Ice, ice is a solid, right? And some of us might have ice in our drinks right now. Ice is solid what? What is ice made of? You can say that loud. Water, right? Ice is solid water. But ice does something funny. 
What if you hold an ice cube in your hand? What starts to happen? It starts to melt. Another science word. What does that word melting mean? Go ahead. It's going away. Well, we'll get, to, we'll get to something that seems like it's going away. But if we have a solid ice cube that's melting in our hands, what's happening to it? Okay. Disintegrating. That's a good word. I like that. But we're talking about a change from solid to what? Liquid, right? If we have an ice cube melting, we have a solid turning into a liquid. And I hope you're all drinking your liquids today to stay hydrated, right? So then what happens if that liquid spills on the floor? What's going to happen to it? What do you think? It's going to... Dissolve, all right? We have another word we can use instead of dissolve. Way in the back, nice and loud. Evaporate, Evaporate right? If we spilled a liquid on the floor right now, after a little while, it would disappear. It would evaporate. That means it's changing into what state of matter? Gas. Say it out loud. Gas. gas. And where else can we find gases? Where are they? At the gas station. That's a different kind of gas. That's gasoline. Although that can be found in a gas state too. Where else are there gases? Mmm, and dry ice. I mean, I can feel some, some gases moving right now around me. What's this stuff around us? Air. Air, right? Air that we're all breathing in right now. <sighs> Air is made out of different gases. So we've got solids, liquids, and gases, these three states of matter. And they can change between each other. So something that's solid can become a liquid. Something that's a liquid can become a gas. So today we're going to do some experiments and demonstrations all about changing between these different states of matter. But that requires something, right? We have to add something. When we hold those imaginary ice cubes in our hand, right? We said start to melt. What is our hand adding to that ice cube? Heat. And we have plenty of heat today, right? So we are going to use some heat, either adding it or taking it away, to change between our states of matter. But, you know, we say we've got all this different type of matter around us. Today, we brought a special kind of matter that you can't just find anywhere. I like to call it our mystery matter. So I want you to use your observation skills. Kara is going to put some of our mystery matter from one container into another, into that beaker, that glass container up there. And I want you all to use your eyes and see what you observe. What do we see? Can anybody explain to me what they see? Looks like steam. What else? Oh, well, how do you know? You're just making a guess. Mm. So you're making a few different statements there. One, you're saying this is a liquid. Agree or disagree? Agree. It's a liquid because liquids like to move and flow. When I think about liquids, I think about hula dancing, right? They move and they flow they're able to be poured. So she poured it from one container into the other. So I think it is a liquid. But our friend over there said he saw some steam too. There's definitely something coming off of it. So it's not just a liquid. What are you gonna say? There's a gas too, right? Now, as Kendra comes around, you might be able to hear and see some bubbles, right? It almost looks like when you pour soda into a glass and see lots of bubbles. But these bubbles are not quite like soda bubbles. Go ahead. It looks like train steam. It does look a little bit like train steam. Yes, definitely. So we've got a liquid and we've got a gas and we've got some bubbles. Now, what word can we use, a good science word, if that liquid is turning into a gas? What do we call that change? Evaporation or boiling, as our friend in the back said. Now, this young gentleman 
is correct that this mystery stuff is called liquid nitrogen. Now we've all made some observations that we see liquid and gas in that container. And we know that change from liquid to gas is called boiling. So we want to test that guess with something we call a boiling detector. Right here, I have a boiling detector. What do you call this thing? Tea a tea kettle or a teapot, right? How do we know if a liquid that we put in that teapot is boiling? What's it gonna do? It's gonna whistle, all right? So Kara's adding a little of our liquid nitrogen into our tea kettle, and let's listen. Is it whistling? Yes, definitely whistling. It's coming out too fast. <laughs> so this liquid is boiling or evaporating, as our friend said. It's changing from a liquid to a gas. But what do you normally put inside that tea kettle like that? What, what kind of matter? Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> what else? Tea. Well, what's tea made of? Water, right? When you put water in that tea kettle, though, if you're going to change the water to a gas, where do you have to put the tea kettle? On the stove. On the stove. But Kara doesn't have a stove back there. There was no extra fire added. So water is special. It, it boils at a very hot temperature. But liquid nitrogen is even cooler. Now, I need a few volunteers to help show this temperature change in liquid nitrogen. If you'd like to help us out, can you stand right up here? Right in front of me. I'm going to ask that you lift up your pointer finger high in the air. All right. You are going to be our human thermometers. You're going to touch this container and you're going to think about what it feels like, all right? Yep, come closer, you gotta be able to reach it. Come closer. Go ahead, come on. All right, so my friends up front, Nice and loud so everybody in the back can hear you. What did that feel like? Ah! Cold, but it's boiling. And we said that boiling needs heat. But you say it's cold? Yeah. But you guys are absolutely right because liquid nitrogen is very cold. It is so cold, in fact, that it boils at a temperature of 320 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. 320 degrees below zero. Now, if I ask you to find some place on Earth where it's that cold, could you find a place on Earth that, that is that cold? What do you think? Antarctica is the coldest place on Earth, but the lowest recorded temperature in Antarctica was only minus 135 degrees. So this is almost double as cold as Antarctica. So thank you all for helping us out. Give them a round of applause. You guys can return to your seat. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes, our kettle looked like it changed colors. Now, we said there is nowhere on earth we can go that is quite as cold as this liquid nitrogen. So right now, it's constantly trying to change from its liquid form to its gas form. Now, we can't see that gas nitrogen. Do you know where else we can find gas nitrogen? Well, where else can we find lots of gases that we talked about? Well, we don't have to go that far. The air around us, right? This air that you're breathing in right now that we are all breathing in is actually 78% nitrogen gas. But we want to see exactly how much gas comes off from this liquid nitrogen as it boils. So Kara's going to add our liquid nitrogen to a bottle, and then we're going to trap the gas that comes off of it, all right? We're going to use something we like to call a gas collector, but you might know it better as 
a balloon. Balloons do a great job of trapping the gases that come out of our own lungs, or in this case, trapping the gas that comes out of that bottle now. Now there's about an inch or two of liquid nitrogen in the bottom of that bottle. And as you watch it, you can still see it's bubbling. We can still see the steam on the outside of the bottle. But what do you notice happening to the balloon? You can say it out loud. It's blowing up. It's getting bigger. Hmm. It's going to pop. You think so? Well, you know what? Let's see if it pops. We're going to count to 10 together. You think you can do that with me? All right. One. Wait a minute. I need more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did it pop? No, we have some pretty strong balloons here. But if we take a look at how big this balloon got compared to how much nitrogen we started with, we only started with this much liquid nitrogen just a couple inches in the bottom of the bottle. And it still looks like most of it is there in the bottom of the bottle. But look at how big that balloon got. So I have a question for you all. What takes up more space, liquids or gases? Yeah. Nice and loud? Yeah. Gases. Yeah, you can let it pull it right off. <laughs> oh, it's got, a, it's got a little hole. It's all good. So, bye balloon. Gas nitrogen actually takes up 700 times more space than the liquid version does. So if we had filled this bottle all the way to the top with liquid nitrogen, we would need another 700 bottles to trap all the gas that it would, that it would evaporate or boil off into. But it's okay for that nitrogen gas to go into the air because like I said, it's already 78% nitrogen gas. We're just adding a little extra in there. But we wanted to show you something else with these gas collectors, these balloons, all right? Something else that liquid nitrogen is very good at doing. Now, this black box right here, we call it a doer, is filled with liquid nitrogen. And liquid nitrogen's temperature feels like what? Hot or cold? Extremely cold. So we've got a box full of our extremely cold liquid nitrogen, and we have some other gas collectors, some other balloons back here. And I want to know what you think is going to happen if we try to get this balloon that's filled with air as a gas into this box that's filled with liquid nitrogen. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, I see a lot of people think it's going to pop. Any other guesses? It's going to freeze. Freeze and then pop, OK. There's going to be some frost, okay, I like that word. It's going to shrink, oh, okay. Any other guesses? All right, let's see if Kara can fit this balloon filled with air into this box that already has liquid nitrogen in it. Hmm. What do you guys think? Oh. All right, so one balloon filled with air into the box that already has liquid nitrogen. Would you like to see a second balloon? Yeah. All right, how about balloon number two into the box that already has liquid nitrogen and another balloon? Wow. Hmm. Let's see. Is it going to go? Is it going to fit? All right, well, let's take a look. She's giving it a little, just a little push down into the nitrogen there. How many balloons are in there? Two balloons. Well, you know what? I happen to have a favorite number. My favorite number is three. So would you like to see a third balloon go into the box? Yeah. All right, let's see. All right, Kendra's adding our third balloon into the box. <laughs> you can see the wind is, is going in this direction across the stage, right? <sighs> so. Three balloons filled with air into the box that already has liquid nitrogen. I want you all to show me with your arms. If you were trying to hold three balloons filled with air, how much space would they take up? Show me with your arms. How much space would it take up to hold three balloons filled with air? Right? I'll, that would take a lot of space, but we put it into something half as big as my arms can hold. So how could we fit those balloons in there? by popping them, but wait a minute. If there was a pop, wouldn't you hear a pop? 
Did you hear anything pop? Well, the only way to see if they popped is to take them back out again. So, we're gonna start with that last balloon that was put in there. We're gonna see if it popped or not, all right? I think the only way it could have stayed in that box is it must have popped. It must have lost its air, right? The air, oh, see, lost its air. It's flat as a pancake. The air escaped the balloons, and that's the only way it could fit inside that box was there's no air left inside the balloon, right? No, there's no air left inside the balloon. What? 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 Magic balloons. Wait, we don't do magic. We do science. So they, but they did start flat as a pancake. You saw them, right? Flat as a pancake. So how do they look their regular size again? What happened when they come out here? Still have the air inside of it, definitely. What else do we know? What happened? Oh, maybe the air that's all around went inside. Well, those balloons are still tied up. So the air from out here couldn't go into the balloons. Uh, my friend in the glasses, go ahead, tell me. What are we, yep. Ah, we saw before liquids take a lot less space. Like the liquid in the bottle took up less space than the gas in the balloon. But in order for us to have that air become a liquid, what did we have to do? What, what does it feel like inside that box? Hot? Cold, right? We had to make the air very, very, very cold in order for it to go from a gas to a liquid that takes up a lot less space. And if we take a look at the first balloon that we put in the box, it's kind of special because it's a little bit more clear. So you should be able to see a little bit of the change from the liquid air to the gas air. It almost looks a little like milk in the bottom of that balloon. So it starts as a liquid because it's been sitting in that nice cold liquid nitrogen. But then as it comes out into this nice warm air, all those molecules, those parts that make up the air, start to heat up and speed up and spread out to fill up the balloon again. So when that air that started as a gas got very, very cold and turned into a liquid, we call that condensation. Then when we bring the cold liquid out here to become a gas again, we call that evaporation. So we have condensation and evaporation. Have you learned about those words in school? Yes? What are they part of? What are they part of? Tell me. The water cycle, you're absolutely right. Water is a really amazing example of matter because we can find it in all three states here on Earth. We can find it as solid ice in glaciers and icebergs. We can find it as a liquid in rivers, lakes, streams, and oceans. And we can find it as a gas in the air around us. So we want to demonstrate a little part of the water cycle right here for you. But of course, that means we need some water. So we have some water that's been heating up during this show because there is something that heats up water in nature. What heats up water in nature? The sun, just like it's been doing a great job heating us up today, right? But we used an electric kettle to help us speed up this heating. Now, as that water gets heated up by the sun, it starts to evaporate, become part of the air, and then it rises up higher in the sky. Do you know what happens to the temperature as it gets higher and higher in the sky? What happens to the temperature way up high? It actually gets super cold. So we're gonna represent the super cold with our liquid nitrogen, all right? Now I have a favor to ask of all of you. You've been doing a great job helping me so far and helping my friends so far with this one. I need your help with the countdown, all right? We're gonna count down from five and then Kara's going to add our very cold liquid nitrogen to our hot water. Are you all ready? I don't believe you. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. We're going to start at the five. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa. You're absolutely right. It looks like a cloud. When that water as a gas rises high in the sky and gets cold, it forms the clouds that we see above us. So Kara's gonna come around with the cloud, but remember guys, please keep your hands down at your lap. The 
bucket still has hot water and very cold liquid nitrogen. So just keep your hands down at your lap, thank you, and she'll come around. But guys, that's the end of our program as Miss Cara comes around with the cloud. I want to say thank you so much for, for listening and for participating and learning about matter with us. And of course, if you love science as much as we do, come visit us at Liberty Science Center in Jersey City. We would love to have you. Thank you so much.